All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Luis, and I've been working on MySQL replication for a little over 10 years now. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Luis. I, I lead the replication team. I've been around for 10 years. I'm based out of Portugal. I've spoken here at FOSDEM um, a few times already. It's one of the places I like to come and speak about um, much more technical, deeper kind of things. Um, and I could talk about replication for hours. I think that uh, some of my colleagues <laughs> are well aware of that. Uh, but today, I'll, I'll just be talking about a very specific thing, which is uh, the binary log, and more specifically, how the binary log is created inside the server, how it is utilized by different components inside the server, including replication and group replication, and how we can look into this framework that is, exists inside the server and maybe end up this uh, uh, presentation with a very little bit, a little bit of, of boilerplate code, if you will, to, you know, to create maybe some plugin that can actually tap into the server and, and extract this. So I'll start just, of course, I'll talk a little bit of MySQL replication, but not that much, I promise. And then I'll describe the binary log. I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody know, uh, here knows what the bin log is, uh, for short. Um, actually, one uh, raise of hands. Who, who here uses statement-based replication only? Who here uses statement-based replication? And who here uses role-based replication? The rest, right? So we will also be focusing on role-based replication for obvious reasons when it comes to change data capture using the bin log. And then I'll try to go into this, uh, looking into um, a couple of use cases, um, the MySQL group replication plugin, for instance, which extracts the changes from the service server and pushes it out to this Paxos uh, communication framework and you know, does all this coordination and then decides something and you know, tells the server to commit or abort transactions and so on. And then I'll conclude the session. This is basically the plan for this 20-minute uh, session. So MySQL replication, this is a very uh, common uh, slide that I usually uh, pull up on, on our sessions. Um, replication is very simple, master slave, and then there's a log that is shipped around. This log contains, records the changes that happened in the primary or the master, and this, this, these changes are then propagated to the slave, and the slave applies them, and if it you know, generates its own change log, its own binary log, then you can build all these different topologies that, for instance, Peter was talking about earlier. For better or for worse, MySQL replication is almost like a Swiss army knife or a loaded gun, as Peter said as well. So you can hurt yourself plenty with it, but it can really get you out of some uh, nasty uh, problem situation that you may run into. The interesting thing that we're talking about here today is the binary log, and the master generates a binary log, the one that is shipped around, and the slave also generates the binary log. There's a persistent buffer which we typically called the, the, the relay log on the slave, which is basically, you know, get the changes, store them on disk, while I'm keeping, uh, trying to apply the, 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 the log and, you know, if just persist them on disk while, while this is going uh, in case, so that we don't saturate, for instance, memory. This was very important a long time ago, but not so much nowadays, because nowadays we have parallel slaves and different parallelization schemes with write sets, we can be almost, uh, we can uh, come to an almost optimal execution history in terms of parallelization. So this persistent buffer is not so much needed anymore as it used to be, but it's still there. And we can build multiple replication topologies, you know, s simple uh, primary, secondary, or master slaves, um, a chain, or a tree, or a star, or a circle, or or a group now with group replication, where you, we can have external secondaries from the group, so you can mix and match group replication with regular uh, asynchronous replication, or you can have an external primary and then replicate into a group, right? And 
why is this important in this session? It's important because we can have, we can have all these combinations of topologies together and therefore we can have dedicated instances of MySQL where we can, we can actually play around to do some um, interesting things related to change data capture where we don't disturb the rest of the, the, the topology. We, I've seen a lot, of, over the years I've seen a lot of people doing these kind of, of things like having a dedicated slave with role-based replication enabled to be able to mine the binary log, transform it, load it into some other system like Hadoop or, or something else. Okay, so the binary log. The binary log is used for replication, but not only replication. Point in time recovery, integrating with other technologies, rolling upgrades is a very important thing when it comes to rolling upgrades because it makes it so easier to just do a rolling upgrade on your topology and more. And as I said, we're focusing on role-based replication format because it's a feature-rich, uh, it's a uh, it's a feature-rich format to be able to load data, capture the changes that happened inside the server as they are recorded in the in the bin log. Over the years, the bin log or the metadata that we put into the bin log format in role-based form, it, sorry, over the years, the the metadata that we put in the bin log. Um, in row format has been extended so that we also make it easier for you guys that are actually uh, implementing these um, special cases of capturing and loading and transforming the bin log and loading it into something else becomes easier. For instance, in 8.0, we have more metadata when, when it comes to the table definitions. So the table map log event, for those that know the contents of the bin log, has additional information such as the name of the columns, uh, such as which fields are the primary key, uh, well, which, whether this um, column is signed or unsigned, and so on, and so, the character sets, and so on and so forth. And at its core, it's really just a sequence of events. We call them events, which, you know, there are some type of events that are control events, like rotate, format description, GDIDs, and so on, and then there's the data itself, which is carried over as you know, a query log event or row based row uh, events. But in the end, it's a sequential history of the execution that happened on the master with the changes that were produced by then. And how is this, how is this, uh, how is this log, change log, formed? First of all, and mind you that, again, I reiterate, we're focusing on uh, row-based replication. The way it is formed is that when a transaction begins and the statement is executed, um, at the handler level between the SQL layer of MySQL and the storage engine, MySQL, as many of you probably know, is, a layer that is, 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 um, is built on a layered architecture where you have this SQL layer which has the runtime uh, environment and so on and so forth. And then there's the handler that separates the SQL layer uh, from the storage engine itself. So when the data is propagated you know, from the SQL layer to the storage engine, we intercept the changes the role changes, the record changes, we capture those, we put this, those changes in a memory cache, uh, in a memory buffer, and we, we buffer this until the commit comes. When the commit comes, what happens is that we get this prepare in the storage engine, so internally we run a two-phase commit, for instance, between the bin log and the storage engine, but right before we flush these changes to disk, to the file, to the bin log file, before we persist these changes, this cache in the, in the bin log file, we notify um, uh, a plugin that, or plugins that could be listening to these changes. Think about group replication, for instance. At this point in time, before we flush the transaction to disk, we notify a listener for this change, group replication, for instance, and group replication takes this um, data and pushes it out into Paxos. By the time it get, gets back from Paxos, we've, okay, transactions is actually committed, so we flush it to the bin log, and then we notify plugins that might be listening that, you know, uh, I want to be notified once the transaction commits. But the important thing here is that, to note, is that the, the capture is all done in memory, and by the time a transaction commits, we share these capture changes with plugins or other listeners inside the server. And in this way, you can think of it as a, you know, a change 
um, a, a, an event bus for data changes that is running inside the server. And this stream of changes materializes as um, a set of files on disk, um, which we typically know as, you know, when we talk about the bin log is really very much overloaded nowadays, so it means many things. And usually people, when they talk about the bin log, it's a set of files that you can go in, uh, inspect what their content is with MySQL bin log too, like Shlomi was talking earlier here today as well. Um, but at the end of the day, the change stream materializes as a set of files on disk. Yeah, so and there's the MySQL bin, bin log tool to actually go in and, and uh, open these files and see what's in there. So use cases for change capture using the bin log. Um, I'm going to talk about or show some examples of, of, of uh, some projects that build on the bin log to do some kind of change propagation or some kind of procedure automation that, would, that, it's really, that really benefits from, uh, from, this, uh, from, uh, from this log. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, things like flashback because Shlomi already did and I, I don't have it in the slides. But that's another use case that you can use this change log to actually replay it backwards and do these things like recovering, um, if possible, recovering uh, an instance to a certain point in time by replaying uh, the change log in, in, in revert, uh, reverse order. So it's actually like a compensation action uh, rather than reversing. Okay, change tracking. Um, I think Rene is somewhere here, or it, yeah, Rene. So Rene in Proxy SQL, for instance, taps into this change stream, and in this in this Proxy SQL case, the 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 the, the process that mines the stream is actually ignoring the changes, but capturing the metadata that is in the change stream. It's extracting the the GTIDs. Of the, that run through this change stream and collecting a global knowledge of the system to know and understand which, in which state is, is each of the replicas in my system so that I can make decisions about the routing of queries to the proper replica. This is how, for instance, Proxy SQL, this is very roughly um, how Proxy uh, SQL uh, does implement um, consistent reads across, across a set of uh, replicas. Shlomi also has this uh, uh, tool called uh, GHOST, which stands for GitHub's Online Schema Transformations, which basically is a tool that tries to do a user land online uh, schema change by, re by copying you know, one ta one from data from one version of the table to the newer version of the table, and in the meantime, build on, tap into this change stream that is being executed uh, while this process is running and trying to collect these changes to later on uh, apply them uh, uh, to, the, to the schema transformation as well and do all of this auto in an automated fashion and online. I mentioned already online rolling upgrades is a really, um, uh, it's a really um, powerful use case or a really f good fit for logical uh, replication or change stream based replication uh, where you can have servers in different versions. They probably have, for instance, different on-disk layouts, different physical layouts, so you can rely on the logical stream to actually make, make sure that you, you have a sound way uh, forward with respect to rolling out uh, ver different versions of the server. Data integration. This is, a, again, a, a very uh, common use case. There's or I put here Oracle Golden Gate, but a lot of people do it with, for instance, Maxwell and other kinds of framework where they tap into the bin log stream, connect for instance as a fake slave to a master, they bring the bin log, they process it, transform it maybe into some more uh, language neutral um, um, language neutral format, JSON or re-encoded in protobuffers or something like that and push it out into some other message bus, in this case, for instance, Kafka or, or something else. Some people actually use that as well to move data back and forth from different databases from MySQL into Oracle or from Oracle into MySQL or from MySQL into some other database and back and forth. And for point-in-time recovery as well, right? Uh, we can take a snapshot, we can rely 
on the bin log to make it uh, to make it so that we can take that snapshot and roll forward some of the change log that happened after this uh, snapshot up to a certain point in time. So we can roll forward the changes, just like Shlomi did on his uh, flashback presentation. He said, oh, I want to roll, roll back, uh, compensate my, or revert the state of my server up until this point. We can do that, uh, of course, in the, in the, in the opposite way, uh, as, we, as we all know. So advanced data change data capture. So coming back to this interesting diagram here, you know, we capture the changes while, they're, while the transaction is executing. Once the transaction is about to commit, we notify that it's going to be committed, and then we flush these changes to the bin log, and then we notify that these changes have been uh, flushed and committed uh, in the bin log in the, in the storage engine locally. So let's have a look at the group replication use case. Group replication is a plugin. It taps into the server. It has all these, you know, fancy diagrams and stack, very nice, nicely uh, layered architecture, um, different modules for capture, applier, recovery, conflict handling, and, and so on. And it has this very interesting um, module here, which is the capture uh, part. And the capture part is really the guy that implements these hooks to tap into the server and say, when you load the plugin, it says, okay, I'm going to register myself as a listener for the events that are propagated, and then at commit time, I want to be informed that these events have happened. So I want to take a part of the decision of what's going on uh, on this transaction execution time, uh, timeline, and I want to know what, what was actually changed. So it intercepts the change buffer and sends it out to the group in the case of group replication. Your execution takes, takes place, it captures it, then it pushes it for, uh, further down in the stack to the group communication engine, and at the very low end, a Paxos uh, consensus round is done, is performed, you know, majority acknowledges, we all make the same decisions everywhere, we have total order delivery in the system, and then everybody advances in the same, in the same order. This is, at the end, it results in, the, in this distributed uh, replicated state machine. But at the end of the day, what I'm really interested here is to show is how, that it, how does group replication intersect these changes. So the intersection takes place here, right before we flush to the bin log. This is, this is uh, this, not that at this point in time, the changes are still in memory, in this, uh, in this buffer, in memory buffer. It's an IO cache. For those that have actually looked into the code, it's an IO cache. And this means that the, the cache is mostly in memory, so it has a fixed size uh, memory buffer. If the transaction changes are bigger or larger than this buffer, it spills to this disk, so it swaps. But at the end of the day, we can consider it just as a, a memory buffer. So we take this buffer and we share it with, uh, with group replication. This is the same diagram, slightly, um, with slightly more detail. Um, we execute, we commit, we prepare, we start the two-phase commit uh, protocol inside the, the server. Then we take this, we replicate in the before commit hook. We, take, we give it to group replication. Once group replication says, yes, okay, we, you're good to go, we commit the transaction. Otherwise, we roll back the transaction. Maybe there was a conflict, maybe this guy was sent out of the group, maybe something wrong happened. But if the group replication says yes, um, com the commit procedure continues, we flush and sync to the bin log, we commit to the storage engine. Committing into the storage engine means we externalize to the SQL layer what, you know, what has uh, been changed. So all logs are released, and now you can see the, the, you have a different uh, view of the data. Uh, when we flush and sync to the bin log, it actually means that we externalize for consumers of the bin log. So slaves will already see it, and other components in the system that are listening to this uh, replication stream will, will already see it. When we propagate to group replication, it means that we externalize already there to the members of the group. So that's one minute, okay. So that's when, um, that's when the uh, actual commit uh, takes place, so it's externalized to the group here as well. And what are the internal APIs uh, for this? 
we, in, you know, if you go into the source code and you look, you'll notice that group replication um, implements these APIs. The before commit hook, and then the parameter for this, for this, um, for this callback, which contains these uh, caches that contain the changes. So it gets this notification with the caches, and the group replication plugin can go in, open these caches, uh, learn the changes, and so on and so forth. This is the this is the uh, an oversimplified uh, version of the before commit hook. It just basically says, "Well, I got the caches. I did whatever I needed to do with them, and at the end of the day, I send it out to the group. I issue a send message to the group communication system. This is." The, at its core, it's that simple. So the key point is that the capture and extraction are the same as for regular replication, except that it, it happens earlier in the commit phase. And just to finalize this session, there is this observer plugin, which is kind of like a boilerplate code that is sh also uh, shipped in the source code uh, of the server, which just implements a very dummy capture uh, uh, plugin. So this is the way, I mean, this is the source, kind of like the summary of the source code of this plugin. It just implements the before commit hook, and the only thing it does is increments a counter. Then, um, at initial, okay, so this is actually just the before commit hook, so it implements a counter. And the, the way it works is that when this plugin is loaded, it registers this hook in the server so that it intercepts this, this, uh, this, you know, this diagram that I showed earlier so that it intercepts this notification and then do something. In this case, it just does uh, before commit counter plus plus, so it increments this, this counter. And that's what I said, basically. And if you're really interested in to go into the look into the source code and whatnot, of course you can. It's, you just go to GitHub's MySQL server repository and look at this replication of servers example .cc, uh, file. So to conclude, it, you know, the binary log is a very useful building block. We see it every day. Um, today uh, we've had, even today we had the uh, Shlomi's presentation for instance ex explaining it. It is not used not just for replication, and since you know very since very long time ago, since early 5.7, we have this uh, framework where plugins can tap into and and listen to to notifications. One uh, comment before I close: we didn't have back then, but now we have uh, in MySQL 8. We have this better infrastructure, which we call the service registry where it's so much easier to register you know, services inside the server so that we have another different set of consumers that you know, just go to the service registry, look up the service that they want to listen to, register as listeners and so on. And we are thinking about moving these hooks that I was explaining here into the service registry to make it even more general for you, <coughs> me, anyone write a plugin to actually make use of this infrastructure in a ve much easier way going forward as well. So that's that. Uh, thanks for, you know, listening to me. And uh, this is really cool stuff. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I, as I do. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Uh, a credit and question. A credit uh, Ghost uses a third-party Go MySQL library written by Yutang from uh, Taiwan, but it works on it on the spare time. So okay. Good. Uh, the question is, uh, maybe you just answered it in this last uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. I think the problem we see today is, like, like you say, there's many drivers or like, many processes that will tap onto the binary log and, mm -hmm. and in different programming language. And any time the binary log format changes or if there's a new data type or whatever, everybody needs to update their code like yeah. 12 different programming languages. Yeah. So the question is, will, could there be a mechanism where we would just tap onto the, uh, the plan protocol or some API and mm -hmm. just Get the changes, like JSON and whatever, something yeah. that it's easy to repeat the question. So the question is really, will there be a less opaque format to the bin log yeah. so that we can make full sense out of it? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, 
We are really looking into that because the bin log is, is actually an API to integrate MySQL into other systems. Someone earlier today was on this stage saying, we have this, this is very good, we have that, that is very good. The real power comes when we combine these two things together. So any two components, MySQL, some other framework, they need to talk to, they need to speak to each other to provide combined value and we see that uh, many times. So we are looking at making the bin log format much more interoperable, if you will. All right, so if you have more questions, just grab me outside and I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you.